So as you saw, it failed a few times during the build. Um, there's actually there was two packages that failed. Um, so what I'm going to do is just to rerun the emerge for KD Apps Meta. You'll see there's five packages actually still outstanding. That's because Gwenview is holding back KDE Graphics Meta and Sudoku is holding back KDE Games Meta and those two Meta packages are themselves holding back the overall um, KDE Apps Meta package which is the um, one that covers all the sub-Meta packages if you like. So those two sub-Meta packages, KDE Graphics and KDE Games, are preventing the total build. And likewise the packages within those Meta packages is um, what's stopping those from being installed? So it's filtering up, cascading all the way to the top. So this is Gwenview that's being built again. And there it fails. If I stop the screen and go back, in fact, I should put the scroll back on to make it unlimited. I always will lose everything. Um, it's coming up with an error about the one definition rule, so I'm not sure what that is. So let's just check to see if that is the first error. Yes, it is. So I'm not sure what that is to do with. Oh, LTO wrapper, right? So it is to do with LTO. Um, and the second package seemed to be LTO related as well. Okay, Sudoku one. So that's just failed. If I go back, you can see it's got LTO type mismatch, which is one of the warnings that gets promoted to an error in the make.conf. So if we edit that. Uh, portage make.conf you'll see this warning flag oh there's that one oh, I can't remember what stood for that ODR so that's being thrown for Gwenview and that one's being thrown for the K Sudoku uh, in fact this oh yeah I don't think this should be here actually Um, yeah, I think the yeah the intention for this is to be in individual packages, as it says for problematic builds, that this gets added to um, builds that don't build correctly, so that you disable LTO. Um, I put that in the wrong place for the looks of it. Let's go to this. Uh, Yes, disable LTO per package. Yeah, using package.env. So, um, using the example it's got here, let's copy this. Uh, looks like that's the same as that, actually. Let's delete this then. So, at the moment, what's been happening for every single bill, because warning flags is including in in common flags, every single build has been using LTO, link time opt optimization, and these flags have been promoted from warnings to errors, if I remember correctly. Uh, GCC. Oh yes, it says in the description, yeah, promote them to errors. So basically it's saying that the warnings that are appearing indicate there's problems with having LTO enabled and by raising them as errors, it causes the build to fail immediately. And then what this LTO page is saying that if they are failing because of any one of these three um, warnings that are detected that are promoted to errors, which are stopping the package being built, to configure those packages to not be built using LTO. 
using the package.env method. So if we go into uh, VI etc portage, and if you remember, we already did something like this with the UTF-8. You see, I created a UTF-8 conf because one package wouldn't build unless the environment was in UTF-8, but my environment hasn't got UTF-8 by default. So what they're doing, they're creating something called no LTO dot conf. So any package that has this conf file specified against it will have these settings um, enabled, if you like. So you can say, see that this time these settings are set not to eject an error instead of the warning. So they remain warnings, but more importantly, um, LTO is forced off. And then that's added into the C flag setting rather than the warning uh, LTO variable. This one to disable the LTO is inserted instead. Or in addition, rather, I think that'll be because, uh, would it be C flags? Yes, it'll probably be in addition because C flags will be set with common flags. So these settings will override what the warnings. Um, settings would be warning LTO. So let's save that. We've then got to modify each um, package. So if we look at, um, in fact, I'll change into it, etc portage. So we've got package.env. So they're using directories again, but I'd like to use files. So here we need to add in K Sudoku and Gwenview and then point it at noLTO.conf. So let's put in this one here and it's probably best to put in the version number because the hope is that this would be fixed um, and that it would be able to or would be allowed to compile correctly. Uh, eventually, package.env. So if we insert a line there, put that in. Now, because we're specifying the variable as uh, the version number as well, it's become what's known as an atom because you've got the category, the name of the package, and the version of the package. And then we put in no lto.conf there. And then we need to find the other one, which was. K Sudoku, so that's that one there. And add that one in. So again, these are in the same category, so I'll just keep them together. And again, put no lto.conf. And now if we re-emerge the KDE apps meta package, those, in theory, those two packages should now compile successfully and they'll be compiled without LTO. Which somewhere in those commands there probably will be a no, no LTO uh, flag being set. And yeah, I think already it's got further than it did before, so that's a good indication. And there you go, there's the second one being installed. So that should mean these are just meta packages, they're not, not no real software being built. They'll just get installed, so they're marked as being installed, and that's it. So we've now got the complete KDE apps meta package installed, which includes everything um, in here. So you can see there's a lot more stuff now, um, educational stuff. Lots of games, a few graphics, 
programs have appeared, including PDF Viewer and an Image Viewer and a Paint program. Uh, internet's a few internet related uh, apps and tools here. A few multimedia apps and some of these are quite capable. For example, KDN Live is what I use to um, edit these uh, videos. Uh, it's a very good video editor. Some additional office tools, including the PIM um, package, which is not by default installed, but I decided to have a go at it and install it. So I want some email details there to set up. So yeah, this looks like a fairly decent email client. As I say, I normally use Thunderbird as my client of choice, but that, that looks like that might be a, a possibly more lightweight one. Um, and then there's loads of setting, uh, sorry, system tools here as well. So as you've already seen, I've been using console, which is a far more advanced um, terminal environment to use as opposed to Xterm. But Xterm has its own uses you've seen in that it's very lightweight and easy to install. This Yakuaki is quite a useful tool, which is a, a prompt that is always available and it can be called up pressing F12 as it says there by default. So if I press F12 it will disappear and if I press F12 again it will appear. So it's quite useful to have if you want an impromptu prompt, you can say that. Um, you just want to do something quickly and then get it out of the way or have something running in the background you want to keep an eye on maybe while you're doing something else. Supports tabs as well down here. Um, new session. So yeah, that's quite a useful tool that is to have. Um, I think that quits it completely. Yeah, it does. It's gone now. It's not responding to F12. So that's KDE apps and that's everything that KDE has to offer apart from the SDK. Uh, if you're a developer, you'd probably know about that. But otherwise, as a ordinary user, there's no point in installing the SDK, which is what I haven't done here.